admin if you've got any questions please put them in the chat um or I don't know, raise a hand and then hopefully the guys will pick it up i'm just going to share my screen get this going and aha is that done yes fabulous okay cool um, so my workshop is called Transitioning, Transitioning with Nature as the Seasons Change. Okay. So we're going to take it right back to, you know, key stage one, two, going back to basics, and we're just going to talk about what autumn and winter is, what they are. And um, so as we know, they're the seasons. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows there's four seasons, um, and obviously it's as it comes to the end of the year. Um, I've actually got a little poem here. Um, that I found from Emily Bronte. So I'll have a go at reading this first one and I've got a poem on the next slide, which I thought somebody else could read if they're feeling brave. So this one is Fall Leaves Fall by Emily Bronte. Fall leaves fall, die flowers away. Lengthen night and shorten day, every leaf speaks bliss to me, fluttering from the autumn tree. I shall smile when wreaths of snow blossom where the rose should grow. I shall sing when nights decay, ushers in a drearier day. I think that kind of sets the scene for autumn. And I really wanted to find a poem that celebrated autumn because a lot of them were a little bit like morbid. Um, whereas I think, you know, autumn is a time for celebration. Autumn is a very, very special month, month season um, for us and for nature, we are nature. So let's find out what happens during autumn. So this year it's the 21st so 22nd of September to the 21st of December. So lo and behold, we are in autumn right now. Um, and what does that mean for us? It means less daylight and more rain. As you can see from today, I don't know where, if it's raining where you guys are, but it is here. Um, it means that deciduous trees shed their leaves. So deciduous trees are opposite to evergreens, uh, meaning that they lose their leaves and then they come back again. Um, and then animals begin storing their food in preparation for winter. Um, so, you know, you've got squirrels cashing away those acorns, you've got jays cashing away the acorns, stuffing things in their cheeks, all that kind of imagery that comes to mind when you think of autumn, that's what's going on. Um, and some flying animals, and I put that and I was like, people are going to be like flying animals, that's just to say birds. But it's not just birds that migrate towards the equator. Um, you've got butterflies, you've got hoverflies, um, that are all starting their big journeys away from the cold, which is what a lot of us, I'm sure, wish we were doing right now. I wish I could migrate away to Ibiza, but lo and behold, it's not happening. So we're here, but a lot of flying animals are off. So that's kind of setting the scene for autumn. And you've got all those kind of colours that come to mind. You've got your orange, your brown, all those beautiful sort of patterns on the ground. Then we slip into winter. Now, do we have any volunteers to kind of read this poem? Maybe better than I read the other one. I was a bit off, offbeat. <laughs> Anyone can like unmute, raise their hand. If not, I can read it. Oh, I think we've got a volunteer, Joyce, was it? <laughs> Did I see your hand go up? Definitely, definitely my okay. mum, yeah. There you go, mum. <laughs> well, <I'm on. laughs> weren't supposed to say that, Chantelle. <laughs> Okay, right. Oh, goodness. I don't know this, so I'll do my best. Okay. Ode, Ode to the Winter. What music, songs to sonnet. While a world drifts to sleep, leaves curl and flowers bow. Flowers take flight to a further place. A touch of frost creeps in, stealing the landscapes of its colour. Soon all shall be held motionless in the still of a winter season. Now in all its changing, the beauty and perfection of life is left open to be witnessed, savoured by the eye of an artist. To feed the soul, nourish the heart, this melancholy season, this changing landscape, what beauty it reveals in an ode to the winter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joyce. A pleasure. Okay, hey, Mum. Thank you. <laughs> she swooped in, bless her to save me. That's what Mums do. 
Um, Sam, thank you, Mum. Um, so that sets the scene as well. Um, it's talking about um, when the world drifts to sleep, leaves curl and flowers blow, birds take flight to a further place. It is a magical time. So in a lot of people's minds, winter might kind of seem like a very dead season, you know, things, nothing's happening, no flowers are coming out, boring. But actually there's a lot happening in nature. It is a very, very magical time. So winter takes place from the 21st of December this year, all the way until the 20th of March, 2021. And Lord knows what's gonna be happening then, but winter is still gonna go on until that day. So that's a constant, so hold on to that. Um, I've kind of said that if we get used to confusion and um, uncertainty, then you've got the key there. Um, but one thing that you can hold on to is the fact that the seasons are still with us and they're still doing their thing. Um, so what's happening in winter? that the darkness draws in even earlier um, we're getting the lowest temperatures of the year um, and actually the word winter comes from the germanic i'm, I'm probably gonna not give this any justice i'm gonna say winter it comes from the germanic word winter which in turn is derived from the root wed meaning wet or water and so it signifies a wet season um, so winter tends to be have the most average rainfall of all the seasons and um, hence why it's so wet um, and deciduous trees, again, they've, they started losing their leaves in autumn and now they're bare. So you're looking at bare trees, maybe they're looking a little bit sad to you, but that is just their natural process. Um, and it's quite beautiful because I'm quite lucky, well, very lucky to have a garden. And so, you know, you see it all in bloom, you can hardly like make, you can hardly sort of see through the trees. And then when in winter, you can always see the ground, you can see everything going on. So it's a really, really nice, different sort of vision. Um, and then we have plant dormancy and animal hibernation slash torpor. So um, plants go into a sort of dormant stage. Um, so they're not really growing, um, they're sleeping basically. Um, and animals hibernate. So the um, only mammals that truly hibernate in the UK are hedgehogs, dormice and bats. Um, our insects are brimstones, um, which are butterflies, comma, it's another butterfly and peacock. Again, it's a butterfly. Um, the seven spot ladybird. Um, and then we have our social bees and common wasps that also hibernate. Um, and torpor is basically like hibernation, but it's a bit shorter and less intense. Um, and the animals that are going to torpor are our badgers, beetle badgers, which is actually the logo of London Wildlife Trust, and amphibians. So you've got your toads and your frogs. They're going into a little bit of a sleep. Everything's resting, everything's chilling out. So can the change in seasons affect us? Now we're gonna have a little exercise here. So everybody, um, what are they called? Browsers at the ready. Um, I hope Idman has got the link just to pop into the chat. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to visit a web page. So if you minimize Zoom and have it in the corner so you can sort of see the screen still um, and then open your browsers and I'm just going to check to see. Fantastic. And Idman's put the um, link in the chat. So just give that a click or copy and paste. Thank you so much, Idman. And it should take you to that page. If you've got any problems, if you can't access it, just pop it in the chat and we'll sort that out for you. Or if you've got them there, just give me a thumbs up. I'm seeing thumbs, I'm seeing thumbs. Thumbs, fab, okay. So I'm just gonna switch my screen to Misha, I think that's what we have to do. Cool, is everyone seeing that? Okay, lovely, everyone's starting to do it already. Fabulous, I didn't even have to explain. Okay, so you should be able to see that the words that you're putting in, so how do you react to autumn and winter? So that's, how does your body react? How do you feel? What's going on? Um, try to stick to one, one word answers, but if you've got, you know, two words, I'm not gonna scold you. Um, so it's gonna wait for everyone to put in their responses. How do you react to autumn and winter? And if you flick back to Zoom, you can see what's happening. We're getting a beautiful word cloud. Okay, I'm seeing cold, low energy, low, burrowing down, 
cozy, wait, get the layers on, go out, love that. Resting, sleepy, cozy, slower pace, eat more, 100%. If you were on this chat when it was like five minutes and I was definitely still eating, I can't stop eating at the moment. Um, sad, yep, feel you there. Fire, I think you're super, super lucky if you've got fire in your house, if that's what that meant. But if that's just the imagery that comes up, that's valid too. Snuggle, yes. <laughs> Smuggling is the one. And if you've got that duvet that makes you want to bed down and snuggle, you're very, very lucky. Okay, they're still coming in. I'm going to let it go till, I don't know what time we're on now, 22, till 23 minutes past. Down, food, wonder, hibernation, retreat, contemplate, reflecting. You guys should just do my presentation because you've just nailed it. <laughs> This is all what's going to be coming up, guys. You did it perfectly. Perfect. Shades of brown, sleepy, resting, warming. Fantastic. Okay, we're at 23 minutes past. Um, so if you feel like still going, you go ahead. Um, if not, so you can have a little look, have a look at the words. I've, I think I've read out all or most of them. Um, but it sort of gives just a very lovely visual um, portrayal of how people feel, what's happening um, in autumn and winter. And also oh, depressed, we've got there as well. And it's also kind of nice to know that you're not alone, because if you are feeling depressed, you're not going to be the only one. If you're feeling sleepy, you're not the only one. You know, it's, it's just a lovely visual representation to say you're not alone. These are the feelings that a lot of us have. Um, and a lot of times when I'm going through something, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm alone, no one understands, but this is really nice visualization because there's repeated words in there that show that you're not alone and you're not going through it alone. So fab, that's how we react to autumn and winter. Let's take it back. New share, here we go. Technology is working with me today. Here we go. Back to the PowerPoint, is that right? Thumbs up if you can see the PowerPoint. Fabulous. Okay, so the answer to that question, can the seasons affect us? And the change in seasons affect us is yes, because you guys just laid it out. Absolutely, they can. Okay, so research shows. Now I've got a few gifts coming up. I went a little bit mad with the gift. So just, you know, that's what's happening. Um, I feel like gifts are keeping a lot of us going at the moment, so just, just go with them. So research shows that um, during autumn and winter, your skin gets a little bit dry and people with skin conditions get flare-ups, um, even maybe um, autoimmune um, conditions as well. So people with arthritis get flare-ups, especially in autumn and winter as the, as the cold draws in. Um, and according to dermatologists, the skin thrives most in consistent conditions. So when we switch from season to seasons, our skin, our body can get going to sort of like a shock, a bit of a like, oh, what's going on? Um, and I've got quite dry skin and I've got eczema as well. So especially with the constant washing and antibacterial of my hands, that's having a bit of a, an effect on the dryness of my skin. So I have to keep moisturized. Um, you can see weight gain, which is if that's what you intend, absolutely fab. Um, but if you're noticing it naturally, that is because a lot of people do gain weight in this season. Um, and like other mammals, we're known to store fat in this season. So it's we're, prep, we're preparing, preparing ourselves for the cold and we're storing that fat. So it's our body. It's not, it's not a kind of um, time to judge yourself and get down on yourself. And it's not, you know, the Christmas pudding all the time or whatever. Um, but sometimes it's literally just natural. That is what your body is doing to protect you in this time. All very natural. Um, then we get, you can get headaches and migraines, which I found really interesting. Um, and they can be triggered by rain. They can be triggered by the stormy weather. So that, um, I think it's a decrease in pressure. Uh, I think it's a decrease in pressure or maybe an increase in pressure. Um, it basically triggers something in your, in your body that can cause headaches and migraines. So if you're feeling that, that could be the reason. Joint pain, like I said, people who suffer from joint pain, um, I think that's to do with the um, pressure decreasing um, and then your joints sort of swell up. So that can be another reason. 
a drop in energy levels. So we saw a lot of people saying tired, sleepy. So you have a drop in energy levels, um, which is natural um, and can be linked to one step, the one down below, which is vitamin D insufficiency. So that's we're getting shorter days, less daylight, and the sun generates, um, the sun triggers the production of vitamin D in our body. So with the less sunlight, obviously there's not so much vitamin D generating and our energy levels are dipping at this time. So it's not you being lazy, that's just what's happening. Your energy levels are dipping. And especially with how we react to light as well, you know, if you wake up with the light, that's fab. But if it's getting darker earlier, then your body's going, oh, I'm tired, I wanna go to sleep. So that's what's happening. Not lazy, just with what's happening. Um, you're more prone to colds and flus, which is understatement of the year right now, um, unfortunately. Um, but that is just what happens. The cold um, air kind of um, creates this really great uh, atmosphere for colds and flus. So that's another reason you might be feeling quite down, a little bit low. Um, and another reason is because your vitamin D is dropping. So that vitamin D that protects us from colds and flus, that's dropping as well. So it's all linked. On top of all of that, the holiday season can be very triggering for people. Now, whether that is because you have to see your family and you don't want to, whether you have to see your friends, you don't want to, whether it's, you know, in normal circumstances without COVID, you know, some people don't have family or friends to go and see at this time. And it's very sad. Um, or this COVID time, you know, you can't go and see your family. We're not sure we're in lockdown, what's going to happen at Christmas. So there's all of that on top of that. Um, and something that I kind of wanted to bring up was um, seasonal affective disorder, aka SAD. Um, and probably what a lot, a lot of what I'm going to say in this presentation, you guys probably already know. Um, so it might not be fresh, but it's just really good to kind of remind yourself that these things are happening and it's not all your fault. Don't get down on yourself. These are, this is just what happens. Um, so seasonal affective disorder can affect people even in the summer, um, but it tends to sort of come up um, in the autumn and winter more often um, and it can cause it can impact people's daily functions and inhibit their ability to accomplish essential tasks so if you're going through this and you're at work and your manager's expecting you to keep up the work ethic you know that you had in summer you're going through this it's not going to happen so you have to take it easy and maybe you know if this is um ringing any bells for you and you haven't heard it before maybe just take a note of it just so you can you know work that into your work life or whatever life um, so these are sort of things that we're dealing with and it's all now a bit like, oh my gosh, doom and gloom, what's happening? Is there any way to fix this? This little cat's like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, so enough of the doom and gloom because there is a solution. So how can nature help? So nature's coming in to save the day right now. Um, I definitely tried to find Superman or Wonder Woman music, but it was all just too complicated. So we have to stick with another gif of Wonder Woman. Um, so Wonder Woman is representing nature right now. Nature's coming in with the shield like, no, I'm not going to let this happen to you guys. I'm going to come and save you. So what can nature do for us? So nature can regulate our heart rate and blood pressure. And how does it do that? Um, so a lot of studies go as far to claim that even a picture of nature um, can lower our stress levels, um, physically regulates our heart rate um, and lowers um, cholesterol, um, which obviously all contribute to your blood pressure. And this is not me just making this up. I'm definitely not a, like a, a scientist in this area, but I have done my research um, as the gift before showed. So this is all very true. Um, something that I, when I was actually doing this presentation, Country File came on and I, I never watch Country File, but I'm trying to make an effort to now watch Country Files. I'm like, I'm in the sector. You should be watching Country File or like Autumn Watch. As I was doing this, Country File came on and um, the lady started saying that something called phytocides are emitted from plants. So these are airborne particles which are produced by plants um, and they're produced typically when um, as a part of the plant's defense mechanism. Um, but those particles in the air that we breathe in help to increase white blood cells help to generate white blood cells and as we know white blood cells are our killer cells are our attack cells and that's what's going to fight off those that flu and those colds so getting outside and rustling some plants maybe walking um is gonna release those phytocides 
and we're going to breathe them in and it's all going to be beautiful inside our body. Um, it improves physical health. So all what I've just said is physical health, but also getting outside, going for a walk, all of that is going to improve your physical health. It also boosts brain function, which is another thing that was on Country File as well. So I'm just stealing from Country File here. Um, but basically the frontal lobe, which is the part of our brain that's hyper-engaged in modern life, deactivates a little when you're outside. So that sort of um, lobe, that's all about technology, all about go, 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 news. It sort of deactivates and calms down and calms us down. Um, and the sort of cognitive processes that are that help us think, remember, focus, they're all activated. So these have been, you know, brain studies that are showing that these parts of our brain actually activate and increase when we're out in nature. Um, especially with children, um, you know, children have this ability to still be making those connections, still be doing things that maybe as older people can't, can't do at the moment, as in making new links. But for children, that's really, really good for them to be outside so that they can start making those links in their head. Um, it reduces anxiety and stress levels. So like I said, it, um, it lowers your um, stress levels by um, so triggering the production of cortisol. Um, I think I'm getting this all right. This is very scientific for me, so bear with. If I'm getting anything wrong, pop it in the chat, please do. Um, so, and that helps us to um, reduce anxiety and stress levels. And I actually, I, have, I get a bit of anxiety. I have had a bit of anxiety today, but um, that proud Mary Tina Turner music kind of calmed me down a little bit. Uh, but if you haven't got Tina Turner to calm you down, go and take a walk outside because that is going to help. Um, and like we were saying before, natural light can alleviate the effects of um, seasonal affective disorder. Um, so if you, if you can get out while it's still light, that can really, really help combat those effects of the depression. Okay. Oh, dear. Technology is now having a mess. There we go. So, what can sort of let me just mute this. What can tease us outside, except for the promise of you know um, it affecting our stress levels and all that beautiful stuff that nature can do for us? What is there actually to see in autumn and winter? So let's begin. So there's a lot to see and I couldn't fit it all on this slide. Um, and I'm someone, I was telling Giselle, I'm someone that has to like format everything perfectly. So as you can imagine, it was a complete nightmare trying to get everything onto this page. So I was like, right, some, some things are getting cut. So this is a very brief um, summarization of what you can see in autumn and winter. So we're gonna start off, um, we're kind of gonna do this a little bit of like a, a quiz. So if you can, if you see something that you know, I'm gonna look into the chat now. So if anyone can name anything that they see right now, and then we'll talk about that. So three, two, one, get ready, go. Can anyone name anything? Rose hips, perfect, Carrie. Oh, you're all going so quick. So rose hips, let's start with the rose hips. So rose hips are the bottom left here, the red, very juicy looking berries. Um, and they are um, from the um, plant dog rose. Um, so rose hips actually come out. So I'm just finding my little bits of notes. Um, so they start to ripen in autumn, um, and they can be eaten and made it, and made into jams and herbal teas. Um, and it's just really nice to see that sort of glint of red outside as you go. So look out for those rose hips. And a very good thing to know about them is that they're really, really high in vitamin C. And I actually read that they could be higher in vitamin C than oranges. So bet you didn't know that one. Okay. So I'm seeing, oh, IVB, fantastic. So IVBs are quite a new arrival to the UK. And um, they've kind of taken the natural world by storm. It's like, where are these bees? And they look, you can find, just gonna move your lovely faces. Um, so IVB is just here above the rose hips. And you can see it right there. It's doing, as its name says, it is feeding on ivy. Um, and there's a misconception that ivy is really bad. That ivy needs to be, um, cut down is parasitic and I work on a woodland project and um, we sort of go around the woods and we see people try to cut the ivy off the trees but that's all myths it's not parasitic um, the worst that ivy can do to a tree is if it's the tree is already dying um, the ivy can weigh it down a little bit and make it sort of a little bit weaker um, and that will that's what will take the tree down but it's not necessarily the ivy 
Um, but so a reason not to take it down is for the ivy bees, it's what they live on. Um, so you can see them around, buzzing around the ivy. Okay, fab puff balls. Thank you, Natalie. So puff balls are these beautiful bits of fungi here that my colleague Sam is puffing so satisfyingly. Um, so it's in the name, they're puff balls. So that's how they spread their spores by doing the little, the little puff. So Sam's nicely going around spreading those spores. Um, and they can get huge, like you can get giant puff balls, which I'm not joking, are like bigger than my head and that is saying something. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you can see these bits of fungi. So fungi is popping up everywhere. Um, and if you're like me and didn't, and kind of thought that fungi was a little bit gross, like, I mean, up until a year ago, I was totally grossed out by fungi. I was like, what are these mushrooms? Gross. Um, and some of them still give me the heebie-jeebies, like um, there's some that I'm just like, okay, I'm not gonna look at that. But things like this are really cool because they've got really cool functions. So fungi is popping up everywhere. Um, and another reason to appreciate fungi is it's a decomposer. So it's breaking down all the waste and returning it to the soil and helping plants to grow. Um, and if anyone knows anything about the wood wide web, um, which is the sort of association of fungi with trees. So under the ground, if you had like an X-ray, you'd see all these kind of like wires. Um, someone said, where's the robin? <laughs> Charlotte, I'm sorry, I couldn't put the robin. I love robins too, but feel like everyone knows you know that robins are around <laughs> but next time I'll bear their mind um yeah Carol some are kind of gross um but yeah something really amazing is that they interact with trees and they can um carry nutrients to the trees they can help um with signals traveling from tree to tree from mum to baby so to be frank fungi is amazing the more you learn about it I'm telling you it'll blow your mind and it'll help you get over the gross aspects of it um uh da, da, da. toadstool magical toadstool someone said so that's the red one here so that's next to the puffball i'm going to stop that's a little bit distracting um and these are called fly algarics and these are the kind of like typical ones that you see in the um fairy tales you know they look amazing but they're kind of like sort of what's the word uh, morbid side effects the fact that these are very poisonous <laughs> um they're toxic so they may look really appealing. And as you can, you might know in nature, things that are toxic and poisonous always have these amazing bright colors. It's, it's not meant to entice you, it's meant to say stay away. So just appreciate these from far because they are toxic, but they're amazing. Um, da, 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 what have we got? So we've got J. We haven't got a J on here, but I think I know which one you're talking about. So it's not a J. This third bird in is not a J. Anyone think what it might be? It's, I'm gonna spoil it. Um, it's um, not a jay, it's actually a waxwing and it's one of my favorite looking birds because it is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like it's been painted. It kind of reminds me a bit of mandarin ducks because it just looks like it's been painted. Um, and to the left of it, we've got a field fair. And then the first picture is a red wing. So these birds are all birds um, that migrate to the UK for some bizarre reason um for the autumn and winter so they're not migrating away they're migrating to the uk so it's a really good time to look out for them um i think the field fair and red wing kind of look a little bit similar but the wax wing is definitely kind of that mm, that's distinctive but it does look like a jay i'll give you that um so and they kind of the red wings will migrate at night as well so it's another kind of reason if you want to go out into your garden or go out into your street and have a little listen you might hear um red wings they're coming in at night so they're active at night which is quite bizarre because you kind of think you have to wake up in the morning to hear the birds but they're still out at night stag yep yeah. so it is rutting season now um i'm not sure how many people live near deer um but they are at richmond park and i went there for the first time i think last month and it blew my mind it's now my favorite place in london um so and you have to be very careful but it is rutting season so i'm not sure if richmond park's open at the moment um, but that would be an amazing thing to see. And rutting season is just basically mating season. So the males are making a whole heap of noise and um, trying to attract their females, which is a lot like the human world. Um, then we've got the green woodpecker, fantastic. So uh, second to the right top row, the green woodpecker. Um, and we've only got, 
two resident woodpeckers in the UK, green woodpecker and spotted um, woodpecker. Um, and so this one sort of dwells on the ground a little bit, so you can see it more than you would see the great spotted woodpecker, which are normally up in the trees. Um, and at this time, they are making all their calls, like I said, with the deers to attract those um, females. Okay, so I'm going to move on now because I think we're kind of running out of time a little bit. Chantelle, can I just, I think we had a question from Charlotte Cook. Um, she said, can you find those three birds in London? Those are the ones that you said migrated to London, right? Yes, so they migrated to England and they, I did check, I was like, make sure this is London specific, and they are in London. And actually, Charlotte, um, I know that the red wings are in Sydenham Hill Wood, which is one of our London wildlife trust reserves. And if oh. this is the Charlotte Cook that I think it is, she works with me. Um, so that's one of our reserves, so go visit. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to move on, but those are some of the beautiful things that you can see in the autumn and winter. Okay, so how can we stay connected to all this gorgeous um, wildlife? So one of the ways that we can stay connected is by aligning with the seasons. And that kind of makes me feel, think about Nina Simone, that song, you know, um, birds flying high, you know how I feel, uh, clouds in the sky, you know how I feel. It's like she's really connecting there with nature. So like a lot of you guys were saying in that um, word cloud, we're practicing slowing down, which is what I need to do because I tend to talk very quickly. So I'm practicing slowing down. So we're slowing down in autumn and winter. We're not rushing around like we were in summer. Um, we're just slowing down a little bit, changing the pace. We're mentally and physically preparing. So just like the, the trees out there that have lost all their leaves, they're now waiting and preparing for spring to come for those buds to burst so that's what we're doing we're preparing for the new year that's what we're going into and we're preparing um, for the new seasons it's a chance to take notice of what is happening outside um, so it's a, a chance to sort of listen to the birds when you wake up um, it's a chance when I'm in bed and I'm it's really windy and rainy outside I kind of take it as a moment of gratitude thankful that I'm in my bed thankful that I'm warm um, thankful that I'm not outside getting absolutely wet um, so I kind of like to think of there's no such thing as bad weather. If you look outside and it's rainy, and I know a lot of the weather can affect a lot of people, but try to spin it into a positive. So you're seeing all that rain, but think about what it's doing to nature. It's rehydrating, it's giving, you know, the world, the earth, what it needs. So just think about that. So kind of change it into a little bit of a positive. Um, winter is a time for self-reflection. Um, and one of the things that my mum um said when we went into our first lockdown was if we can't go outside you've got to go in so whilst we're indoors let's go in let's think about how our year has been let's let's think about the highs the lows how we can prepare to go into 2021 with a fresh outlook it's time for self-reflection and just slowing down um, and it's also time to nurture ourselves so um, i'm really big on self-love and everyone's on a kind of self-love journey and it is a journey because sometimes it's like 10 steps forward 20 back um, but it's a time to nurture yourself. So just like we were saying before, you know, we get dry skin, um, it's time to rehydrate, keep that water going. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, you forget because it's not humid, you forget to drink water, keep that skin hydrated, um, keep eating well, you know, just be um, obviously conscious that your body's storing that fat. Um, so just keep that nurturing going on. Okay. So venturing outdoors, oh my gosh, scary, scary in winter. Um, so one of my top tips is wrap up warm, okay? Um, you know, like I have a lot of, uh, I'm, my heritage is Caribbean. And, you know, they'll, you'll have people in Papua going, I'm not going, you know, I'm not going out there, it's, it's cold, it's cold. So tip, wrap up warm. I promise you, it will save you. And one of my top tips is base layers. So you can get them from Sports Direct, you know, um, thermals, which are like the thinnest bits of material. So I don't really get how it works, but they they will keep you warm. So a lot of times I've got out in my in my base layers, which you can get a top and basically leggings that go underneath everything. And I'm sweating. So get those, get that scarf, get that hat, prepare yourself and wrap up warm because you'd be surprised by how much it helps and how much it gets you out there. You don't want to go out naked. It's not you're not going to want to go out again. Um, any amount of time will do. Um, I watched one of my, my older sister um, go outside in our garden and literally just stand there for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. She literally just stood in the garden and we were all kind of looking at her like, what are you doing? 
she stood there literally just breathing just breathing in the cold air just breathing in what's around her just go out it could be two minutes one minute you know that kind of feeling when you splashed your face with cold water that's a bit like what it is so just go outside feel it and come back in if that's all the time you've got um reawaken your inner child so we've got a little gift going on there climb some trees swing from some branches you know it's like all of a sudden we don't climb trees we don't interact with nature we don't do anything fun like that anymore so I'm a feely feely person if I'm going to a shop I'm feeling everything so I like to feel the bark I like to feel leaves as I go past just kind of feel it let your skin interact with what's around you um grounding <laughs> this always kind of brings up nightmares for me because when I was working in an office I sort of said I brought up this concept of grounding and I was laughed out of the place um so <laughs> don't do that to me today but grounding is about you're kicking off your shoes and you're feeling the ground and I do that often when I'm comfortable I have to get my shoes off and I get them onto the ground um so if you can just step outside and get your feet on the ground it's going to be cold but those negative ions that are coming up from the earth are going to connect with you and do something wonderful to your body so get out there and ground with your feet um, and take your activities outside if you've got a zoom call that you can take outside go ahead get that blanket wrap up if you've got a call with your mum whoever just take it outside go for a five minute walk and come back in um and then also you want to engage with your senses and be present so something that's really important about this time is being present we have a tendency to think about monday to think about tuesday to think about yesterday to think about then how about we just be present how about we just be in the now um, I'm one of those people that's multitasking because I'm like, I need to do this, I need to do that. But right now I'm seeing a lot of you guys are literally just focused on me and I'm like, yes, we are present right now. So that's what I want you to do in nature. I want you to be present and to think where you are, which is going to take us on nicely to forest bathing. And this is a concept that I only found, about, found out about last year. Um, and it's kind of a new, maybe a new sort of concept to the Western world, if I can say that. Um, but it was actually developed in the 1980s um, uh, in Japan and the Japanese word for it is Shinrin Yoku um, and it's a relaxation technique which was developed to help us to be calm and quiet amongst the trees um, and it's an invitation for you to breathe deeply and obviously you're breathing in those phytocytes remember you're breathing in all of that amazingness and it's going to boost your physical and mental health and also keep you in the now um, and some of us aren't, you know, some of us don't have woodlands close and that's absolutely fine. You don't have to be in a woodland. You can literally just go out and apply the same technique, just that deep breathing and just that kind of like being aware of what you can see. So if there's one street tree on your street, that's the tree that you're going to go and, you know, forest bathe with. Um, so I'm a really big advocate with work with what you've got. Unfortunately, accessibility in the UK is a privilege instead of a necessity, which it should be. Um, so not a lot of people have access to green spaces, but work with what you've got. If you've got a balcony, if you've got a window that you can look out at, do that. That's all that's important. So going on to that, I'm going to take you for a virtual walk in the woods. So we're just going to take this time. I know we're getting to the sort of crux. I, I don't know how I rambled on this long until the end. Um, but so we're just going to have a bit of a two minute walk through the woods. So if you can make your screen wide, if you haven't got anything else going on, or if you have, just take a minute just to be with us right now, be present. Um, hopefully you can hear this. And I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. I oh know, it's a bit fast. Okay, so what I want you to do, um, so we're walking through the woods right now, walking through the woods. So I want you to kind of think about three things that you can feel. I'm trying to find my little thing of a joke here. So I want you to think about three things that you can see, sorry, um, three things you can hear, two things you can feel, and now we're imagining, okay, so what can you feel as you're walking through that forest? What is it you can feel on your arms? Is it cold? Is it warm? I just heard a woodpecker. Um, what can you smell? And if you're close to any edible fungi, what can you taste? <laughs> or edible, if you're close to any rose hips, what can you taste? So just one minute we're going to go for me being quiet and you being quiet and deep breathing.
Okay, guys. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, maybe I'll keep it playing while I talk. So I'm not sure how you kind of felt. Um, I've had a little bit more time, or if you wanna pop it in the chat, you can, how you felt, what you could feel, what you could hear, what you could see, how it made you feel. Does it make you wanna go out and find the wood? Um, and one of the things that I'll say to you, is a lot of people think that they haven't got woodlands near them, but you have, just go and just have a little look for them. It might not be a huge patch of woodland, but they are more common in London than you think. I work on a woodland restoration project in South London. I wouldn't have a job if we didn't have woodlands in South London. So I promise you they're there. So just go and have a look for them. But like I said, if you haven't, you use your street trees, you use with what, what you've got. Okay, so that's just a little practice for you. And if that kind of helps as well, you can literally just go on YouTube and go, you know, 4K woodland walk and it all comes up for you. And uh, there's also like 360 ones that you can do. So if that helps you, you know, that's your connection to nature as well. Okay. How do I get out of this now? Um, there we go. So, deepening your knowledge of nature. Um, I'm also an advocate for um, not cheating as such, but easy ways. So if you don't want to lay in your, your bag down with books, books and books and books. I've got this um, flower guide. It's, it's the rose guide, it's like the Bible of, of wildflowers, which I got gifted. It's amazing. But a lot of time I don't want to take it out. I don't want to be flicking through the book. Let's just cheat. Let's just download an app. And I know everyone's kind of like, oh, don't be on your phone. And yet I encourage you to put your phones away and just be in nature. But also sometimes you just want to whip your phone out and have a little look. You spot something and you go, what is that? So um, I think Idman is going to pop some links in the chat for you. Um, so one of the things, these are all apps that I've got on my phone. So there's, there'll be plenty more, but these are the ones that I can vouch for. Um, so the one on the left here is, uh, which one is that? That one is um, iNaturalist. So iNaturalist is amazing. It's really, it's like a generalist one. You literally take a picture of whatever it is on your phone, a fly algaric, and it gives you um, what it could be. Um, you click it and then you get a community of people going, yes, that is what it is. No, it's not what it is. So you kind of learn. And with that, um, sort of learning, you're deepening your knowledge. Um, but I'm also a very big advocate for the fact that you don't have to know every single plant that you see. You don't have to know every single name. You don't have to know the Latin for it. That's just all rubbish that we've been told. Like, it's amazing if you do. You don't have to. That's not how everyone has to connect with nature. Um, but if you do want to know, there are apps out there for you. Um, Shroomify as well is really, really good for mushrooms. Um, also, the top one here is um, PlantNet. That's just for plants. But it's amazing. Very similar to iNaturalist. Um, but apparently, you can use it, sort of take pictures of bark as well, which is a bit, I'm not sure about that. Um, and also, you can get involved in citizen science. So, Nature's Calendar is something that the Woodland Trust puts on. And you basically kind of just go out and you'll say, oh, I've seen my first sycamore that's there today. And you pop it in there. It's really easy to do. And they do a little um, calendar of how each year of what the first um, rose hip people see is the first um, field fair people see is so you can engage in that way as well. Conscious of time still. Um, another way of connecting if anyone is a big lover of the moon of the stars like I am. Um, I the other day I was on a walk um, with my partner and we were literally like by the river which is beautiful but then there was kind of like there's not there's trees around but it's not like a woodland setting it's still very very urban. Um, but I literally, I don't know what sort of made me think about it. We were looking at the stars in the sky because it's very, very clear. So one of the beautiful things about autumn and winter is that you get some of the clearest skies because the cold um, air means that there's less capacity to hold moisture. And so you're seeing clearer skies. And of course, you've got longer nights. So you've got more time to stargaze. Um, so a really, really great app is Skyview Light. Um, and I'm just going to play this very, very quickly. Speed it along a little bit just to show you what it does. So basically you point your phone at the sky and it's telling you what constellations are there what you know if anyone's um into astrology you've got your capricorn over there you've got your own spell over there it's honestly mind-blowing amazing um to every little star it will tell you this is um this name or whatever and the other night we were actually looking at mars which blew my mind um so that's another way of you connecting with nature using technology as well which is as I said, a no-no sometimes, but it's got to be done. Just use what you've got. Okay, coming to a close. 
soon. So the last sort of thing that I want to sort of touch on is how to invite the outdoors indoors. So, you know, if you have unfortunately got to self-isolate for 14 days, it's like, what are you going to do? I can't go outside. I can't. Um, if, you know, you're shielding, anything like that, or if you just can't get out, there are ways of inviting the outdoors indoors. So window gazing is actually a thing. Um, so if you can't physically get outside, you can arrange yourself close to a window, which is what I love to do when I'm working. I literally feel like I need something on me, like I need the, the sunlight on me. Um, I need to be able to see something green. Um, so you can do that, position yourself near a window and get to gazing and, you know, use that as a time to sort of look at nature, look at the trees, the sky. Um, pictures, art depicting nature. If you can take a couple of pictures or wallpaper on your laptop, that's a beautiful scene that will help as well because it's proven that even pictures trigger that calming sensation in our brains. Um, house plants, it's one of my beauties behind me. I'm obsessed with house plants. I think a lot of people are at the moment. It's an addiction, help. Um, so house plants as well, it's like having a little bit of nature in um, and it also gives you a sort of sense of purpose. So I wake up and I'm like, what do my babies need? Like, what do you need from me? It gives you a sense of purpose. Um, and it sort of it purifies the air as well. So it's, it's doing all those beautiful things. Um, collect natural materials. Um, collect some feathers if you want and just place them in your house. Um, collect some leaves. You can make collections of things. Um, you can start making jewellery. That's what they were doing on Country Fire. It was incredible. Um, so start to sort of experiment with what you can do. Bring in some pebbles if you want. Um, another thing that's helping me at the moment, I'm kind of going through a phase where I'm not sleeping very well. Um, so I have been putting on natural sounds, whether that's the sound of rain, whether that's the Amazon rainforest, um, you can pop those on and they will help to calm you. Um, and yeah, um, so also last thing is that you can get sad lamps. Um, not sad like, oh my gosh, my lamp looks sad, as in seasonal affective disorder um, lamps. So they're basically just lamps that emit light um, and you can pop them on for um, 30 minutes to an hour. Or I think Giselle was telling me she has an alarm clock one, which literally wakes her up gradually um, with this light. And that kind of like emulates daylight um, and emulates those sun, that sun hitting our face and helps with our vitamin D. Um, and also helps us to stop producing melatonin, which makes us sleepy in the day, in the day when it's getting dark. And so that's really good. That could be a really good way um, if you can invest in that. Um, and those are kind of my ideas for inviting things in. But of course, if you've got your ways of doing it, please put them in the chat. Um, but that's ladies and gentlemen, and they and them. Um, thank you so much. Any questions? I'm sorry we're sort of running. I know it's two o'clock now. Um, if anyone has to leave, please do. I'm sorry we run over, but that is that. Oh, thank you so much, Chantel. That was awesome. Um, yeah, so so we are um, we are. It is two o'clock now, so we we we're willing we're welcome to stay on for another five minutes if anyone does have any questions. But obviously, if you need to leave, like you're welcome to. Thank you so much for joining us. There's so much information in the chat. I gained so much just from that 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 hour. So remember to save the chat if you are going to leave now um just because there's like all the links and everything that Chantel mentioned is written up in in the chat so um so don't lose it so yeah we we, we are going to do a quick five minutes question time if anyone's got anything that they want to ask Chantel um you're welcome to either put your hand up and Idman will find you or um if you type it in the text box then um then Idman can read it on your behalf so uh yeah go for it got lots of thank yous thank yous <laughs> thank you guys for coming thank you for being here and taking time out of your day because I'm sure people are at lunchtime right now or or whatever but thank you so much honestly um Charlotte Cook asked what's the woods like where you work um and I think I saw maybe, maybe it was Natalie as well I think I saw a question from her about the project as well um so did you say where I work what was that um, so um, I work on a project called the Great Northwood Project, um, which is in South London. It's called the Great Northwood because it's north of Croydon, which used to be like the centre of 
everywhere and apparently there's like a, a bustling market town um so we look after 13 key sites there and um, which were all linked up in the 16th century as beautiful and green and um, which are now fragmented unfortunately so what we do is we work on telling people about it so what I'm doing right now should be on I should be getting paid for this um, <laughs> um so um, we tell people all about it because not a lot of people know about it and um, we also run volunteering there um and uh community engagement events so there's a mixture of woodlands I mean some of them are ain't uh can class as ancient which means they're over 400 years old um you know you've got your typical beech trees in there you've got um, birch trees in there they're absolutely beautiful very very open and it's not the typical horrible like you know I'm scared to go in there they're quite open so you've got spaces like Crystal Palace Park is part of it as well and um, Beulah Heights in Norwood so they're all quite a mixture all very very beautiful so if you're in South London please do visit thanks Lala I think we have a question for Giselle where is the good place to find out more about Black Girls in Blue? That's a good question. Yeah. Oh, that is a good question. 